Okay. Good e good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Rare City Council e meeting. This is um, May twenty first, twenty twenty four. This is the closed session meeting starting at four five thirty four p.m. Um, public comment. Looks like there's no public comment this time. We will close public comment and we will go into closed session. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> or that portion. Is right. All right. So there is uh, no reportable action on the uh, closed session um, special meeting. And we adjourn at 6.04. Welcome to the Rock City Council meeting for May 21st, 2024. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to which stands for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Good evening, everybody. I just wanted to remind um, everybody in the audience to please silence their cell phones at this time for no interruptions, including our council. <laughs> All right. Um, so before we get started tonight, it's been brought to my attention and after review of uh, our packet and applications um, for this evening um, from council members, and then myself for um, reviewing. Um, it's it's in question that the the applications for um, the events submitted um, for Miss Taylor have are not complete and possibly come back for review. So I'm going to go to Mr. Ledbetter. Um, regarding the applications and the process of it not being complete as of today, as before us, Mr. Ledbetter? Yeah, so I think I'll just restate for the folks in the crowd here. The question that you have is, uh, Chris Taylor has three events here on the agenda tonight to discuss with the city council up for possible review. And you're basically stating that you or multiple council members are claiming the applications are incomplete. Uh, we have been working with Chris over the last year on a number of events. These are the three events that she's moved forward with. Uh, there have been questions over the completeness of those applications with the community development director. In the planning manager, you'll see in your packets, there's two letters that are basically saying you need to address these questions before we can move to council. I did meet with Chris and explain to her because she felt that it was slightly unfair that maybe some of these questions were unfair to her in some fashion, or she couldn't answer those questions until she actually got the event date squared away. I think that was kind of where she stood. So I let her know that I would bring these things forward, but hypothetically the council may have questions that are unanswered within the application. So yes, I guess from the staff's perspective, we have addressed that we also feel that the application is incomplete hypothetically, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Leber. So any other do have questions or comments from the council members regarding these applications? Councilman, um, <laughs> who wants to go? Well, I'm questions, uh, Councilman um, McCoy. <laughs> As I went through my packet this week, one of the things I noticed, and, and, and many things, it's not just with these, but with, with another one also with the sock hop, and we'll deal with that mm -hmm. also. But there are two pages of questions mm -hmm. as we go through um, that are come from looks like Ms. Lucchese. Um, and I have have those, there are 11 bullet points, and then there are three sub bullet points. Have those been addressed at this time? Mr. McCoy, can you tell us what page you're on? <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am on um, 90, excuse me. 89 and 90 of 129. Okay. Good evening, city council members, Mr. Mayor. Um, to answer your question, some aspects of some of these questions have been addressed, but certain um, important details such as activity locations, infrastructure locations, electrical and power plans, and more 
specific details around the nature of certain activities as presented in the application have not been addressed. Okay, so my my concern with, that I will address to council, my concern is the council spending lots of time on this tonight when it is not a complete application. We don't work with other uh, consor uh, you know, applicants when they come in if they, they need that if they don't have a complete uh, application. And it's not that I mean we'd like to you know we can look at this again, but we need to see the complete applications so that we're not don't look at it again, then send it back, then look at it again, then send it back. And pretty soon it's been two or three meetings. So that that that's where I'm coming from. Thank you, Councilman McCoy. Councilman Baker. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor Middleton. I'm in agreement with uh, Councilman um, McCoy. I think that because we require everybody who comes before us to have a complete application, I would like to see a complete application before this comes before mm -hmm. council. And I am just going to toss out there that I make a motion that these are removed from the agenda to come back at a time when um, they're complete. Thank you, Councilman Baker. Yeah, I will. Any questions, Councilman Kay? I just, I really advise that you speak to your attorney oh. as well to make sure that this is, is he on? I believe so. Oh, is he on? Are you up uh, on there, Mr. Jared? Good evening. Um, did you hear um, the conversation and the questions and the uh, uh, request from Councilman Baker? Yes, I did. We need to be certain this is not a public hearing item. And so reordering the agenda or asking to um, moving to table the matter to another date um, is an appropriate um, motion um, to be had at this time. Okay. So it's not a, um, yeah, so it's not a public hearing. Okay. Listed under um, new business. Right. Okay. So at this point, you have a motion on the okay. table. It would be appropriate um, to see if there's a second and then take a vote on that motion. This is Councilman okay. McCoy, and I will make the second. And I also want to all you know iter reiterate that when it comes back in fully, you know, when it's fully filled out and we know exactly what's going to happen, um, that then at that point in time, if it needs to come back to us, it will come back to us. But it is for the benefit of Chris Taylor to be able to go back and and do this and kind of clean it up and then and then bring it back to us. So I'm that so that's seven A B and C correct, Councilman Baker. Uh, no, it doesn't. Or was it? No, it's wait. Am I? Oh, oops. I'm sorry. I jumped over. Seven B C and D. C D. I'm sorry. Okay. I have a motion from council member to um, bring back um, items seven uh, B, C, and D um, due to incomplete applications to bring this back to us. And I have a second from Councilman uh, McCoy. After they've been completed uh, with uh, the people in the office, with the uh, staff in the office. Right. Full uh, complete application back before us. Okay. Yes. Uh, what's that? I, I, I would suggest you go to your yeah. attorney for possibly public comment. Uh, do I go to public comment, uh, Mr. Jared? That we have the event planner wanting to speak. Um, do I go to public comment before we come back and make the decision? So with the, the applicant um, wishing to speak, yes, you, you should. Um, but again, we, now you've taken this item out of order, the appropriate approach would be to um, go on with the rest of the agenda and take this up at the proper time. I what? I can hear you. I, I can barely hear you. What, what'd you say? <laughs> to take this up at the prop, uh, proper time during the agenda. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
council and bring it forward and move it forward from the front of the agenda also is your option, Mr. Mayor. What are the wishes of the council? So you want to bring items uh, seven B, C, and D, correct? Well, are we bringing them forward to speak to the items which are incomplete, which is the reason we're pulling, ask or asking for the items to be pulled until they can be completed with staff, or are we? What is the purpose? I, I understand what Ms. Uh, Taylor's purpose is mm -hmm. and what she wants to do, and I don't disagree with that. Right. Uh, but if are we asking, uh, maybe council can uh, ask us how how deep this goes as far as public comment right now, since we are moving to pull the item. And it looks like you have support. Mr. Mayor? Right. Yes. So there, there's essentially three things going on here. One is to bring an item forward in, in the agenda. That's a, a motion to reorder okay. um, so that you're talking about it now. That's kind okay. of been done. And to go into that in deeper form where speakers are speaking about it, I would recommend a formal motion to um, reorder the agenda and bring this item forward. That's why my recommendation was just simply um, take it as it appears in the agenda as set, item seven B, C, and D. The um, motion that was on the table was um, essentially a motion to table that through um, kind of a speaking amendment there became um, a little bit more to it um, because of its incompleteness. Um, and um, that is apparently what the speaker would like to speak to. I would therefore recommend what you do is take this item, either through a motion to reorder the agenda and take it right now, or in its normal course as items, um, when item seven new business comes up and hear the item um, for, um, for the purpose of hearing out what the applicant wants to say. The applicant now knows that you believe that the applications are incomplete. Um, and so that's the way I would recommend that you proceed with this item. All right, thank you, Mr. Jared. Um, okay, so what are wishes of the council? Do you wanna reorganize it or come back to the item when we get there? <laughs> um, at this point in time, I'd rather reorganize myself, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I have a motion. So that's a motion to reorganize the uh, the, the order from uh, Councilman Keg. So do you want to do a second? Sorry, uh, <laughs> Is that a second? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I have the motion to um, re uh, reorder the agenda to bring items 7B, C, and D to the front for discussion. I have a motion from Councilman Kaig and a second from Councilman Davis. I will do roll call. Councilman Kaig? Aye. Councilman Davis? Aye. Councilman Baker? Yes. Councilman McCoy? Aye. And I am Mayor Middleton, so the motion passes. So we will go um, now back to 7B. And then we will go to um, for public discussion. We'll, but first, we'll go to. Uh, you want me to read these? I probably should probably read these as well, <laughs> right? Since we are coming back before them, uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. I, I would recommend it. I think it would be appropriate in this circumstance to take items B, C, and D, seven B, C, and D together okay. as one item, um, g given the the issues that are involved here. Okay, and do you want me to read every uh, the read the seven B and D or I'm sorry, um, B C and D all together? Um, yes, you could do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we are discussing seven <laughs> B C and D. So the agenda title um, B is request for street closures, fee waivers, and consumption of alcoholic beverages for a special event known as. Your Body, My Canvas. Chris Taylor, event sponsor, has submitted the attached special event application for the special event known as Your Body, My Canvas. The event is proposed to take place Friday, September 20th after the farmer's market 
Saturday, September 21st and Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. Event sponsor requests permission to close downtown Minor Street, a waiver for those costs of a temporary use permit and cost of staff time and equipment required for the event to, to take place and approval for the consumption of alcoholic beverages at the event. C. Mr. Mayor, I think it would be fine if you just wrote the agenda title for the other two. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Saves me. Uh, C is request for uh, closures, fee waivers, consumption of alcohol beverages, special event known as shadows and illuminations. D is request for street closures, fee waivers, city staff and equipment assistant assistance and use uh, uh, fire department resources for special event known as kids block party. All right. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Taylor. Good evening, council members. Um, I'm Chris Taylor, shop center and deputy owner. I want to raise the mic up just a little bit, Chris. I'm sorry, I can't. So the 320 West Minor Street. Um, I was unaware that my applications were still considered uh, incomplete um, until I just walked in. So this is a surprise to me. Um, after multiple times of resubmitting my application, also sitting down with Jason, trying to get it finished up to their standards, um, I thought we were good to go. I was not told at any time that they were still incomplete. Secondly, um, the multiple times that I had to submit the paperwork was there would be a question on the application. I would answer it. I would get an email saying they wanted more detail. So I'd answer that. And then it would be more detail on that same question and it just continued. So at this point, um, I have to say I'm pretty frustrated because I did not know this was the case and I'm losing time. Um, artists are booking out, musicians are booking out. Um, so I need to know what I need to do to finish this because like I said, I've submitted it multiple times. And basically my thing is if it's not on the application, um, and it's something, you know, really controversial. If it's not in the application, I shouldn't have to keep, anyone shouldn't have to keep going back over and over and over again to answer a question when added detail is basically added to the process. Um, I've gone back, I've gone over paperwork, I've called companies to make sure, even though I haven't gotten to hire them yet, I've. Um, Got made sure that they are licensed, that they work with the cities and the counties when they come in. These are big companies that are going to bring some pretty amazing things to our community. But I just keep getting pushback, it feels like. And the quote that or the comment that I felt like I was being treated unfairly is the one where um, body the body painting event keeps coming back with specific questions that seem to be singled out. And it's it's getting to the point where it's it's excessive. And this has been years and years of this. And I'm not understanding why there's such a pushback on this. Do, so do you, uh, do you feel this hold on a second. Sure. I, I think just since we have you here, I'm I'm a little confused, Chris, because I sat in my office with you because you refused to work with my staff, and I told you specifically that I would let you come to this meeting, but that the council would assuredly have similar questions and that technically the applications were incomplete. So just as an example, because you're questioning basically my honesty, in my opinion here, is let's just go to page 89 of the agenda and let's ask if these have been answered. And as an example, please provide more detail on the various mediums of art that will take place at the event. The current application states this includes, but is not limited to body painting, portraiture, henna art, sculpture, and more. Please clarify what more entails. So you need an you need a list of every single type of thing that's going to be there? Yes. Some of the things that are going to be there are not on city property. So it was mentioned at one point from someone in the city that if it doesn't happen on city property, it's 
quote unquote, none of our business. So if it didn't happen on city property, I didn't list it. Yeah. So you would just need to remove more because at that point we don't understand what that and means. I did in the, re in the revised edition that I put in there. Mr. Mayor. That. Yes, Mr. Jared. You can certainly continue um, to have this, consider this matter, um, but you're also um, getting into a situation where it's sounding like the application is being amended on the fly here and your staff might not have the opportunity to then analyze it. Um, and it's my understanding that there has been these repeated requests to um, augment the application and we we have the the documentation as it's before you as was made previously there was a motion on the table um, but it's been brought um, to this point I would say that that prior motion has now died um, and so now you're at the, the position of actually considering this but this is getting beyond what is typically done with permits of the back and forth um, instead having a three minute public comment uh, period by an applicant, other public comment, and then council action. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jared. So I need to know, is the kids block party also considered incomplete? Okay. statement. Um, I have a question real fast before we move forward, a question from um, Councilman uh, McQuay for uh, Mr. you, Mr. Garrett. Can you clarify yourself? Mm -hmm. You said a motion came forward, but it has died. Do you want to tell me what that motion was? That was, um, I believe that was Council Member Baker's motion to table the matter that I believe you seconded um, that yes, has not Mr. been acted upon. And instead, um, there was a subsequent motion that was made and the, this whole item was brought forward for um, discussion, essentially. No, sir. No, sir. Indeed, that motion was brought forward uh, by uh, count the Councilman Baker and myself, and then you advised us that we should uh, we should move this up on the agenda. So, no, sir, that is incorrect. What you're advising now. So, can we go back then to the original motion? So you wanted Rather to than spend time here trying to fill out. Um, an application for several things that we don't have, we have no, um, we don't know the ordinances. The, sit, the city staff knows the ordinances. Uh, our city manager has told us that they've been working with Ms. Taylor. We would love them to continue to work with Ms. Taylor uh, until we get this straight. This is not something that's new. We get people who bring us uh, things that are incomplete and we have to send them back and have them redone. So, but in fact, the, the original motion is still on the floor from Mrs. Baker uh, and myself. We only move forward on your, at your behest, sir. Yes, that was to get the um, the applicant who wanted to speak on the matter. Um, and there was the idea of having the applicant speak on the matter. Um, so that's where you're at now. So um, can we have the applicant speak? We listen and then we go back to our original motion. Correct. Okay. That's what Thank I'm recommending you. to do. Thank you, sir. I That's think Ms. Taylor has another question. Though, okay. That... All right. So continue. <laughs> I just want to clarify that is this the status of the city, of the kids block party as well? That you're considering it incomplete? Um, it's two you read. That's the ones I read because there has been, was there a change, the change to the event? Correct. To the kids there, party? Mr. Yes. Or the Mr. Ledbetter? The last applicant or application I put in was to have it at this uh, minor street park. It doesn't say it. Alia is going to come up. Okay. Duke, Alia, do we have like the map of the park or do we still have the map of the minor street? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you speak into the microphone? Okay. We still need an updated site plan for the Minor Street Park layout and uh, an electrical plan for the power proposal that the applicant mentions in their application. 
Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So it sounds like um it sounds like to me that it's um it's going back. There's still a lot of work to be done on the applications. Um, I can send the, her the email again where I made the adjustment and put in the Minor Street Park map, so I can do that. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, what, I'm, gonna go I'm gonna go back to the recommendation or the um the motion for Councilman Baker um to have the events come back and once they're correct, come back before us for the events on the completed application and any changes that are, are made or any requests that the um, city staff um, is requesting from you. Uh, I think that's all we can do at this point instead of the back and forth of he said, we said incomplete applications. Okay. So the motion was to bring the events back once the applications are completed and uh, before us have the motion uh, from Council Baker and the second from Council McCoy. And can we have the language to say that they are completed to the uh, as certified by our office rather than having come back to us? Well, I think that's I'm pretty I think I'm pretty clear when it says a completed application, it's ready to come before us, correct? Yeah. That's my understanding. Okay. 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 Uh, I'll go for roll call. <clears throat> Councilman Keg. I guess that's a tough one. But anyways, um I, I I'm gonna say nay because I think this is I think there's a lack of some type of communication going on here. Um I don't know where this is coming from. I guess I'm not blaming anybody right now. I'm just saying I think there's a lack of communication and I'm not not really particularly happy with that. So um I think there's something that could be worked out. And I'm so I'm going to say nay. So, okay, nay from Councilman Keg, uh, Councilman Davis. Aye. Councilman Baker. Yes. Councilman McCoy. Uh, I'm going to say I. Um, there's obviously communicate. There's obviously somewhere where you know yeah. we're not communicating, but that's this is not the council's purview. This is not what we do. We run a business meeting and that sort of thing. So this is up to, and this is, has always been up to the applicant. So, I, you know, I think as long as Alia and Juliana and city manager are continuing to work with with uh, Miss uh, with Chris, I think it's fine. I, I would prefer you're not working with it because I would prefer you're out trying to bring in, you know, businesses that million dollars. I'm, I'm not getting on you, Jason. <laughs> you're, you're very valuable to us. You have it since you came. But, you know, so I'm, I'm going to vote uh, uh, to go ahead and have a come back to us. All right. And so, um, yes, from uh, Council McCoy. Um, so, yes, just um, work with the staff and the staff will work with you to get these applications ready for us when it comes back, because we cannot move forward with the ifs, ands, or maybes with an application from anybody. So uh, with that, I will uh, say aye. So the motion passes um, four to one with the nay coming down from um, Councilman Keg. Uh, so thank you. Okay, so now we go back to, this is, uh, actually we go back to, wait to the top to the consent agenda, or public comment actually. I'm sorry, Mr. Right? Mayor, actually number two, we do have a special presentation. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I gotta go way, I gotta go way back there. Okay, so we'll go back to item number two two so this is special presentations and our announcement this time slot is for informational presentations appointments and awards to be presented by the city council or to the city council this is the Rika police department and sergeant buker will be speaking to us tonight Good evening. We'll just wait for the people to clear the room before you start, if that's okay. <laughs> so we can hear you. And... All right. Good evening, Officer Buker. How are you? 
I'm doing well. Thank you for having me tonight. Appreciate the opportunity to share what we've accomplished uh, with the council members and, and the mayor. Thank you. I'm sorry, that. Sergeant. I'm sorry, Sergeant Buecher. That was disrespectful. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a presentation up on the screen here. I'll kind of go over some of the highlights. Uh, next screen. Um, so um, I continue to work with the community to have an understanding of the current laws and the zoning awareness for camping in the city. Um, and I've got to say, I'm, I'm, over the last uh, month and a half, two months, I'm really impressed with the amount of support that I'm getting from the city and also the residents, uh, particularly right now up on the hill. I haven't gotten too deep into the Greenway, but I've got a lot of cooperation from those folks living on the hill and their willingness to help clean it up when it, when we do our cleanup. So it's been really great. Um, so the hill's been fairly well cleaned off. We need to conduct a, a hand pick and pick up the, the ground litter. The city crews have done a great job in bringing in the equipment and picking up the uh, big piles of trash and the few tents that we have had to dispose of. Um, since March, we've had 599 incidents um, involving homeless individuals. Uh, they're not all necessarily up on the hill, but they're folks that we know that are currently homeless in the city limits of Wairika. Um, and those, in, those incidents involve assaults, thefts, medical calls, overdoses, um, pretty much everything, all the gamut of anything in the book. So um, it's not anything specific. Um, but the thefts and the shoplifting from the south end stores seem to be a little bit higher, but um, those stores are calling and reporting, and hopefully we're, we're doing a good job assisting the, the local markets uh, stop and catch back some of the, the theft loss that they're, they're suffering. So the next page, um, we've assisted in uh, four hillside cleanups with the city. Um, each of those are consistent of six to eight dump runs um, with two dump trucks running. And again, uh, we've only had to remove three tents. Um, one of them was the only one that gave me a little bit of, of uh, feedback um, was wanting to maintain his tent. But after three weeks, he's failed to erect it and I removed that tent from the hillside. Uh, the other ones were clearly abandoned, littered with garbage and stuff. So we're getting a lot of cooperation with the folks keeping the areas clean. Um, I do have one problem area, and we'll address that shortly. Um, but we've tried to trash bags. We're using the multi-crisis response team from Behavioral Health to come out when we need to offer people behavioral health services. And they're a great resource for us to come out and have a different approach to getting these people to directed where they need to go for assistance. So my goal is, you know, keeping the, the camps clean. Um, addressing people, letting them know what the zonings are for where they can set up their tents. Sorry about the picture being a little distorted. This is after our first cleanup. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what trash, what what's tents and what's trash piles. Um, there's still a considerable amount of chance. If you look right in the middle of the page there, uh, there's two separate piles. Uh, that was one big pile and we took a big chunk out of the middle of that and over the next uh, two cleanups, we get that area cleaned up as well. But um, that's just how much trash was up on the hill when I started. So the next slide shows the trash pickups that, that I'd scheduled with the city for the third pickup day. Um, that's the in the middle of the two red dots. Uh, that's the two areas that were left. The bottom right one was actually picked up on the first day and uh, was reassembled to a heaping pile again. So on our that trash day that picked up uh, most of that. Uh, but again, there was considerable amount of trash in those. Those piles are, are not uh, just a few bags here and there. They're actually mounds of trash and debris. Um, since starting this and getting the hillside fairly well cleaned up um, with all the large piles, uh, I worked with Ben and Tyler, the city, and we've decided that having the the trash pickup areas that we've got in the red squares there um, will help us be able to drive through and pick up areas. And I believe that the the yeah. residents that are on the hill will uh, help us by keeping bags of trash and metal separated in, in those areas. And it'll make it a lot easier for the pickup. I think we're at a point where we're not having to take the heavy equipment, the excavator and the front end loader uh, up there. Um, we'll see how big those piles get and we might still need the front end loader, but I'm hoping that um, we make regular rounds in the pickup, I get most of it in the truck and take it out to the city yard and put in the dumpsters that are already out there. Uh, this was one of the first site cleanups and that's what the piles pretty much have looked like 
uh, throughout the hillside uh, when we've been using the, the heavy equipment. Next slide. Uh, this is the one tent where the gentleman uh, failed to erect the tent after three weeks. Um, it, it was kind of progressed a little bit, um, but he was still not staying on the hill or at his tent or making any effort to get the tent erected. Um, so we did remove that tent. The next slide, uh, this gal's up towards the top. She's made considerable improvements and cleanup efforts. She's uh, actually made two piles that we were able to clear up on the last cleanup uh, from this. She's consolidated to one tent. Um, and that's you know what I'm working towards is working with the, the folks on the hill to keep their area clean and help pick up the trash. Next slide. This site's my my problem tent. Can I pause uh, you for one second? Um, Sergeant can you ask them to step kind of over down a little bit? <laughs> or, or I can't I can't hear you. <laughs> so. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Okay. So this this gentleman, I'm gonna have to take another approach at. Uh, so I'm missing the first picture. Um, it pretty much looked like the third picture, but with an erected tent at the top. Uh, he got a new tent and he slid all the garbage and uh, debris up in between his tent and neighbor's tent. Um, and that's the first picture that you see on the left there. The second one on May 5th, he had uh, taken all that stuff on the left of the tent and stuffed it into his tent. Um, on May 14th, the tent uh, failed and collapsed and he had started <laughs> strewing the uh, debris back out. Uh, a lot of it's clothes and other miscellaneous items. Um, He's had the opportunity to go to the wash point and the laundry point several times, and he's still making a mess. So um, that one we're going to work on next week um, when we're up on the hill. Uh, Greenhorn Parks uh, hasn't escaped the, the housing issue, and uh, this is a hole dug into the side of the hill, and it's got uh, living quarter supplies there. Uh, there's, there's a little camp stove. Uh, there's some bedding. Um, but again, I haven't had time to get back up there or easy access to get up there with anything to pick it up. I had contacted the Forest Service, or I'm sorry, the CAL FIRE, and they will help fill the hole back in when they're doing their exercise marches up the hill, but uh, they won't be able to remove any of the debris. So I'll work with Ben on getting some of that out of there in the near future. Heritage Huts on Minor Street. Uh, it's been a problem area as far as people moving in there, especially in the cold weather when it's raining. Uh, this was the last camp that was there. Uh, there that's a full king size California bed um, <laughs> that's on the ground there. And the both sides were pretty much littered with uh, trash and debris and, and personal items. Um, it, it had posted it several times. Uh, one gentleman wanted to argue with me that he had just got there and uh, but he knew that the sign was posted and we had a discussion and we saw it my way. So they cleaned out the, the camp, city crew went in and ended up uh, mowing the yard and stuff. The mattress was left on the back wall. Um, so we collected all that and disposed of it. Uh, so we're pending uh, cleanup from the graffiti and you can go to the next slide. Uh, I've already talked with Ben about getting the, the cleanup for the graffiti that's all around the, the heritage hut there. So that's in the works. But since this day, there hasn't been anybody camped out in there. Uh, so the, the creek west of the property, uh, state fence line there, from the fence line down to the creek behind Miner's Inn, uh, this gentleman is collecting a lot of rocks and has very little camping gear. He's got tent and a little stove. Um, and he is down in the creek um, making rock dams in the creek. So this is on the planned cleanup for this Thursday. Um, and it's about 80 yards from Minor Street North uh, along the creek there. And he's got buckets and debris and stuff. You go to the next slide, there's a few more pictures of it, but he's got that kind of stuff uh, along the creek. So what I've seen is needs is, is possibly looking for maybe a second dumpster, but it appears that the, the other citizens of Warwick want to use it as well. So we're gonna to have to come up with another plan for that. Um, the one dumpster, even putting it in the middle, I'm still getting a rift of folks that don't want to walk through the dumpster to drop their stuff off. So that's why we went back to the, the squares with the pickup areas that I will hope will 
alleviate some of this problem so that they don't have to walk one side or the other. I have had some complaints that the porta potties are outnumbered, so they're not being serviced timely. Um, they're getting disgusting and whatnot uh, before the end of the week when they get cleaned. So things that we've completed was the, the access road through the center. One of the maps you saw the road through the middle. Uh, they did that one. They did another road up through the middle uh, from the campus road up. Um, so we've got access roads to the middle uh, intersecting in the middle of the hill now. It makes it easier to pick up the trash and get to the people. I have mapped out uh, what campsites people belong to so that I have names. So I was able to use that this uh, week, contacting one of the residents with his family in North Carolina. And they're hoping to get him, get an ID and get it back uh, in time for his son's graduation. So hopefully we make that work out. But uh, he's got to get a valid ID first. So. We're working on that. So I've kind of split the city into thirds. Um, obviously, it's the north end with the shopping center. Um, we have a frequent huddle, huddle in the corner there. The property owner doesn't want them there. So the property agent uh, works with us, and we ask those people to move along. Um, typically, they're drinking in the corner and moving along. So um, they've all been warned that drinking in public, they're going to be able to be cited for that and they need to stop and desist that. Uh, the trees that are between the motel and the restaurant, uh, same property agent uh, has requested permission from the owner to limb up those trees, uh, cut the brush and or remove the trees. Um, that will help alleviate the hiding spots and the folks being able to get in there and camp out without uh, being held accountable for their debris and fires. In central, uh, the, the fence along the I-5 off-ramp there, um, we're going to address that on Thursday. Um, the camp that everybody was calling about uh, underneath I-5 on Minor Street, that individual, he had moved to the Lenox Street uh, bridge, and he was on top of the bridge, not under the bridge. So um, he his hopes is to move to Dunsmere. So I'm working on trying to find him transportation for that. Um, again, he's got a lot of rock rubbish that he collects and wants to take with him. So um, grandma's house seems to be a collecting point for folks uh, hanging out. Um, I've had a few sleep in there lately. Uh, usually when we go by, most of the folks will pack up their stuff and move along. And it seems pretty effective just to ask them to move along off the private property. Um, we try to do daily checks in the morning and the evenings at the Heritage Hut, Plaza Park, and the city parking lots, specifically the one on North Street at Oregon Street, Third Street there. Uh, south end of town, you have the, the Oregon Junction Shopping Center with Rayleigh's and Walmart. Um, Walmart has a new manager, and she's been moving campers and stuff off of their property. Uh, she had one towed at a very steep $3,500 plus tow bill to them. So that's what it's cost to get the, the, the RVs towed out. Um, that was just the tow. That wasn't the dismantling and disposing of it if it came down to that after they got rid of it. But um, Ray, this has always been calling about people in their parking lot. Um, and we've been working with the property manager and, uh, owners there to keep that shopping center free from campers. Uh, the, the greenway, I'm going to start working on that, um, since we have the hill fairly well cleaned up, um, the underpass at I-5 in the greenway is completely vandalized with graffiti, um, there's camping in the parking lot there on Oberlin and also uh, by the big billboard behind the auto shop there. Um, we're working on getting those folks moved. I did go down there the other day. Uh, one of the gentlemen packed up his stuff and headed up to the hill. Uh, he said he told me that he's been living in the creek for seven years um, and doesn't necessarily want to live on the hill because of the drugs and going on up there. So, um, But he, he did move up there. I saw him heading up there the other day. And then there's additional camps along the pathway as well, but we'll get uh, we'll get those folks visited, get those tents and sites uh, tagged for moving. Uh, when I was down there, the one, first picture is the gentleman that was leaving. The other two, one was vacant and one reluctantly came out and she was advised to also be moving. Those are two other tents that are within that area of the Willows, uh, just north of the billboard uh, on the Road. Yeah. 
the Lenox Street Bridge, it, it's part of the Greenway project. It's got one overpass over the creek. Uh, there had been camps on both sides of it. Uh, we've been checking that pretty regularly and there hasn't been anybody down there. Uh, both sides of the embankments or embutments are uh, full of graffiti, but at least there's nobody camping in there for right now. Uh, Greenway down by Deer Creek. So from Montague, Wairika Road, uh, down to city limits. Uh, there's a few camps in there, uh, specifically not at the Greenway Park area there. Uh, those folks have moved out a year and a half ago or whatnot. Uh, Willow did a good job moving those folks out. Um, but down by the sewer ponds, there's a big encampment. Um, and then there's one a little bit shorter and one right behind the, the city yard that they've all been told to move. But um, I've got to, I try to plan my tagging them for notices to move um, when we're able to have the city crew come out and do it. So I talk to them, I tag it, I give them the first notice, and then I, I'll, I'll put a red tag on it and let them know that they've got another tag um, before everything's going to be removed by the city. So um, it's been great working with Ben and Tyler and the city crew. Um, they've met all of our needs on getting the equipment and getting a full day's work out of it, um, even though they're making several runs to the dump. But again, I think we've made progress on the hill and that's, um, those folks uh, want a clean area. They want it picked up. So uh, one of my goals in the upcoming weeks is to have a trash pickup group with uh, civic groups, uh, religious groups, and the folks on the Hill. And we'll start a, a police line, we call it in the military, where you start top and come down and hand pick up the rest of the trash that it's on the Hill. And with the trash pickup points that we've established on the Hill, uh, the hillside should become a lot clearer, a lot cleaner, sorry. Anyway, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I could yes. just, uh, I just want to make a statement to Sergeant Buker that I think we all have just seen the incredible amount of work that has been done on campus drive. And so we're very appreciative and I just want to make that statement in public. So thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Sergeant Buker. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Okay. So now we're at item number three, I believe, correct? Okay. Okay. Item number three, this is public comment. Public participation is welcomed and invited at all city council meetings. This time is set aside for residents to address the city council on matters listed on the consent agenda as well as other items not included on the regular agenda. If your comments concern an item not, I'm sorry, item noted on the regular agenda, please address the city council when that item is open for public comment. The city requests that persons addressing the city council refrain from making personal, slanderous, profane, or disruptive remarks. Council members and recognized by the mayor may ask clarifying questions of the presenter, but no action may be taken by the city council during the public comment section of the meeting. Under the Brown Act, the City Council is prohibited from discussing or taking action on any item not listed on the posted agenda. This time is set aside for residents to address the City Council on matters listed on the consent agenda, as well as other items not included on the agenda. If your comments concern an item listed under the public hearing or new, bus or new business sections of the agenda, please address the City Council when that item is open for public comment. Please speak into the microphone from the podium. The podium electronically adjusts up and down to accommodate the speaker. Please state your name for the record prior to providing your comments. Please address the council as a whole. If you have documents to present, please provide a minimum of seven copies. These become public record. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Since council is unable to take action on any issues not on the agenda, your matter may be referred to staff for follow-up or placed on a future agenda item. <clears throat> the public comment period is not intended to be a question and answer period or conversations with the council or city of staff. Public comment at this time. Hi, I'm Steve Bradford, 409 Evergreen. I came here with a really happy heart just overwhelmed with gratitude and, and passion about our town and our county. 
I love this place. It's so beautiful. I ride a motorcycle. I get out there, and and this place is just amazing. And then we have this beautiful, beautiful street being redone. I'm so impressed with the workers, and I came here literally to congratulate Matt and Ben and Jason and the council, whoever's involved with, uh, you know, watching out that that is working well with the shop owners, the driveways keep being left open for everybody to be, you know, accessible along the drive, the 99 there. Um, you know, those guys are, work I'm a construction worker. I can appreciate what they're doing every morning, every night, all night long. I think they're working all night now, down days. Um, it's amazing what they're doing. It really is amazing. I'm so impressed. And and with, you know, if uh, Matt and Ben have anything with, with, with you know, say so in, in, in coordinating, you know, how these folks are treating the citizens of Wairika and, and how well it's working, I'm really impressed. But then I listened to this report by the officer here, and I'm disgusted. This is the work of the councilman. This is the work of the councilman since I've lived here for 15 years. This place has gone down to a shithole. And I am so disgusted with it. This is ridiculous. This is America. This is what we live for. This is what I'd fought for in Vietnam for this crap. I'm disgusted. This guy, this officer, how much did he have to just pay or did we just pay him for that report? That took three hours, four hours to write up all that report. Very well done, very detailed, you know, it makes my heart just pound like crazy. I'm so mad right now that we have to live with this. We up here, the rest of us up here that pay the taxes, do our duty to be supportive and, and, and be responsible for our lives and our families. And now we have to deal with this. 99% of their job today is dealing with that. That is not what we're here for. We never had this problem long ago before the socialist thing started happening in, in America or California, whatever, what, what have you, but uh, this is not the right way we're going. Where has it come, come to in the last 15 years, in the last 70 years when they started welfare? I watched it start happening when I was a kid, 16 years old, and it's not gotten any worse. They keep or any better. They keep throwing money at it. You're throwing money at it. You got, I'm paying for them to go potty now. That's ridiculous. Common sense, folks, common sense. This is not getting any better. It's getting worse and you keep throwing money at it. Just like our stupid president throws money across all of the, the country that we don't have no business with and that we don't have any business with this either. If they're mentally ill, we should be doing something darn right. We should be doing something about it. This guy, Mike, I think his name is the big tall blonde kid. I'm sitting on my motorcycle the other morning out there by grandma's. He's waking up. He wakes up, he starts screaming and yelling and hollering. I'm just sitting there minding my own business. And he's, you know, just going off. We've seen, we all know who we're talking about, who I'm talking about. He attacked me one time one morning. I caught him on one of the hose bibs on a property I take care of. And he was taking a shower under the hose bib. I said, you can't do that, man. And, you know, he, he, he wasn't leaving. He continued to wash himself and stuff. And I had a weed eater in my hands, you know. And uh, I said, you got to move. And I didn't touch it with him, but I just said, you got to move. You got to move on. This is not your water. And he when I turned my back, he came up behind me and went like that. And so then I swung around the, the weed eater at him, but I missed him. I didn't really want to hit him. I just wanted to get him off the property. Well, the other day up here, Saturday, Saturday morning, I think it was. No, Friday morning, Friday morning. He goes, you want a piece of me? You want a piece? You know, he's, he's, the guy is crazy. He belongs in an institution. I've called before about him. He's moved. He used to camp out at the library right here. It started to smell like a, a piss hole right there at the library for a while. I called Jason. Jason took care of it right away. But now he's, He's moved down to, to uh, grandma's and then he's somewhere else, to, you know, the next day. But the fact is that guy has, we all know who I'm talking about. He's got a mental problem. 
And California's not doing anything about it. You know, Reagan took it away. All because... right, thank you. Five minutes times. Thank you. One more second. Reagan Five minutes, took thank it you. away because the the money, the pork money at the top was being abused. That's why he took away the mental health facilities we used to have. That's why we don't have those today because the money was being wasted just like today. Thank you very All much. Right, thank you. Don Mariatri. Um <laughs> yeah, I got my voice back. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was here last time talking about how we might have set a precedence and how it might look to other people, other citizens, about how our applications, our contracts are not exactly clean when we allow Discover Cisco to be willy-nilly with the name. You know, they may change the name, they may not change the name. And then they come with a total different name other than Gold Rush Days, Heritage Days, to Golden City Days. And this is exactly the problem I knew was going to be coming from Chris Taylor. <laughs> it looks really selective when you decide that it's okay for Discover Siskiyou to have an application to say whatever, but her application, all of her applications are not good enough. That is what I was trying to tell you last week or last two weeks ago. And here it is. And then the second thing is, I thought we were gonna stop giving away money to people who make money. This is not okay. At what point are we gonna stop doing that? Cause it looked like we were gonna give away 9,000 something to 11,000 something. So we're giving away all the money but we're making all of our citizens pay double on water. And I really need to go back to look at how much money we have given since you all have been sitting here. How much money have we given away? That should be something you're interested in, especially because you know you, you are the one who, who is our watchdog too. How much money have you given away this year or last few years since you've been here? And when is it going to stop? Because, you know, we need to be giving away money to, to, to organizations like SNPs, who's going to help us with the feral cats. But if we give away money to all these other people, how are we ever going to be able to give money to actually them to do spay and neuter and to do spay and neuter for animals? We've got puppies up there on the hill. You know, SNPs was able to give 32 dogs shots, parvo and distemper. Thank God. Two females were not able because they're pregnant and going to have puppies any day. We should be mandatorying these homeless people spay and neuter. I mean, they do not pay for a license like we all have to. Those dogs should be $111 each. Where's the money for that? You know? <sighs> Thank you. Stan. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Lorenzo Love, uh, when is the last time uh, you did not waiver the temporary use permit? I don't remember you ever not wavering it. And how are you going to justify ever not wavering it in the future when you have wavered it over and over and over again routinely? If you try to not waiver it, that's that's a selective uh, permission. You're going to be picking on somebody. And how can you justify that when everybody else gets it? So what's the point of having this temporary use permit? Why the $942.55? Why that value? What does it do? 
what's the justification for having it in the first place? And if you're going to waiver it every time, get rid of it. People can request a temporary use permit, but don't charge them for it because you don't charge them for it. Who are you going to charge this money for? It seems like everybody gets it. Last week, you had uh, uh, the Elf Club auto show. You didn't even mention that. That wasn't even on the agenda. But then the Elk Club had never had anything turned down. Uh, this, you need to be consistent. <laughs> Either get rid of it if you're not going to be charging for it or charge everyone for it. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you. Any other public comment? <laughs> Jan Osborne, without an E on the end, please, when you put it in the minutes. Good evening. This has been a tense meeting, to say the least. But the first, the main thing I came up for is to remind us all that on Monday, May 27th, we have Memorial Day. It's not a day of celebration. It's a day of solemn remembrance of those who gave their lives in the service of our country. And I'm here to encourage you all to fly your flags. And remember, there's probably someone in every family who gave their life maybe more than one or two. If you had family here in the Civil War, like I did, you can go to the Civil War parks, national parks in the United States and see all the people. So fly your flag on Memorial Day, please. And don't celebrate, remember solemnly. Little pause. Now, this next thing, the consent agenda. Item F on the consent agenda. I read through the packet. This is the uh, one about the housing project, which will be up near, uh, well, right next to Deer Creek Apartments. I have questions about it because when I read the description of who the housing was for and what was going to be provided, it sounded a lot to me like Siskiyou Crossroads, but without the seriously mentally ill people in it. Um, and from what I understand, and I could have misread it because this was a long agenda packet, 200 pages, I think, or more, but um, as I understand it, Danco Group Home, I think that's the company, or Danco Group in Arcata will be filling out the grant application and it will come back to the city. My concern is, and I guess it's really a question, will it come before the council and when the, will the grant application be printed in the agenda so we can see what exactly they're going to do and what we or they will have to do. And then since the city is the pass through, the city will have to be sure that they do it. That's my, my question. And I thank you for your time and for your forbearance when my phone went off during Sergeant Buker's speech. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Marilyn Anderson, and I live at Deer Creek Apartments. And it's been a quiet 
peaceful place ever since I've been there for over 13 years. And uh, the mobile home park next to us has a lot of seniors also. And if there is going to be an apartment complex built, please consider a senior complex next to us because if it's a one, two or three bedroom apartment complex, that means families and you know all the other things that go. And we have such a uh, drug and alcohol problem in Lyrica anyway, and the traffic is, is going to be really bad too. So I would I would not care to have that be a multi family person place if if you would consider doing senior apartments. And I'm sure there's a need for senior apartments buildings because I know there's always people coming to Deer Creek apartments looking for a place to live. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, okay. My name is Cindy Hammer. I'm speaking on behalf of my husband and I, Wayne Hammer. <laughs> uh, we just really want to say thank you to Sergeant Buker. This is the first time that homeless camps on Campus Drive have been organized. It's the first time in all of these years that we see campers below the line that has de been designated. Um, I'm so excited to hear about the roads where you can drive through and monitor the homeless camps uh, in a vehicle. And I'm especially excited about to hear that they're numbered because these are things I've been saying from the very beginning to set it up like a positive campground where these people can have some pride that they're camping and not just in the gutter. And so uh, we have majorly seen a difference. My hat goes off to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, with that, just have, thank you and have a good night. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, just really quickly, I'm Wayne Hammer, and we we do have the property that's uh, adjacent to that those uh, homeless encampments. And I uh, again want to also thank Bob Buker and, and anyone assisting him on this because we've had fewer incidents of, of trespassing in our property and garbage on our property and things. Which you know, I, it's it's hard. I'm not going to criticize that. This is a hard thing to solve, and it's all over the country. So. I just want to thank Bob and anyone helping him for all their efforts because we we have seen some positive impact. So I just want to say thank you publicly. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other public comment, um, we'll go to the consent agenda. And then I had a request from Councilman Davis to um for 4e to come back for for discussion or comment regarding that to, to if we could um if that's like 4e that is the i don't know he asked for it to be pulled he doesn't have to have a <laughs> not pulled he asked for it to come back for discussion Every meeting, it's consent agenda. It's the business that we do. It is the regular business that we do. I understand that consent agenda, whether they're here, county office, uh, school district, the board supervisors, the county agenda is routine. We don't put anything on there unless we think it's routine. So, I mean, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I mean, I, I think we spend, and I'll say it again, I said at the last meeting, we spend a ton of time pulling things off, off the consent agenda. If we don't like the consent agenda, then we need to start directing the city manager not to put a consent agenda on, list everything separate, and then we need to approve it separately. That's just my, you know, I will say I will say it until until I die. Uh, of course, I was in public school for thirty years, so I've seen this, and I'm just and and I see it even in private sector with consent agendas. But 
I, I'm going to speak out in 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 on the opposite side, uh, re uh, respectfully, Mr. Davis, that I don't see pulling anything off this. If we've looked at it, we've done our homework, we had questions, we've spoken to somebody in the city offices prior to this meeting. That's what we are paid the big bucks for. And um, we need to move forward. We need to do the business of the city and 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 um, not try to micromanage. If we have an issue, we've got to go directly. I mean, this is what I was taught when I first came on. We go directly to the source and it's that man right there. And then he sends us to whoever we go to. So, and I respect what you're saying, sir. So is it okay with the, uh, he just asked for, I don't know if he had a clarified question. He just asked that we pull it for a question that he might have. Um, is that okay Mr. With Mayor, I, I just want to reiterate that under no circumstances is there really a question about this. Any council member can pull an item off of consent. That is general that's practice. What I, that's what I stated. I said he, he requested it be for you. Then. However, I will stand yep. by if we are, and, and I, 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 uh, I respectfully, I will stand by that if we don't want the consent agenda, don't have the consent agenda. We don't need it. We don't have to have it. So let's go item by item. We can do it quickly. I mean, I would advocate for that in the future. So okay, we'll discuss yeah. that in the future. So that's okay with the council. We're going to move for E um, uh, for a question that Mr. Davis had, I guess, um, towards the end. So consent agenda. <laughs> this will be minus um, for E. So uh, A, B, C, D, and F would be the approval consent agenda all my matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and non-controversial and will be enacted by one motion unless any member of the council wishes to remove an item for discussion item 4a approval ratification payments issued from april 28th 2024 through may 12th 2024 b approval of minutes for special meeting held may 3rd 2024 c approval of minutes of the regular agenda may, held May 7th, 2024. D, approval of minutes for special meeting held May 14, 2024. E is uh, for discussion towards the end, or back after we vote. F, adoption resolution 20, 24-28, a resolution city council, city record authorizing the application of the pr permanent uh, local housing allocation program non-entitlement local government competitive component. G, authorization of the Rikers Police Department to uh, accept block cameras. What are the issues of the council? Have we pulled E? Have we had a vote to pull E off? Or are we just pulling, can, can it be, I mean, maybe, can it be pulled off by one person? That's what I understand. That's my understanding uh, with my time at the county yeah. is that it's just pulled off by one individual. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd make the motion to approve consent agenda items A through D, F, and G. I have a uh, motion from Councilman Baker. I'll second the motion. Uh, I'll do roll call. Councilman Cake. Aye. Councilman Davis. Councilman Baker. Yes. Councilman McCoy. Aye. And Middleton. Aye. Okay. So now we will go back to um, for E for um, question or discussion requested from Councilman um, Davis. This is the adoption. Adoption of resolution 24-27 resolution of the city council through adopting a catastrophic leave policy to be included in the personal properties and procedures manual. Mr. Davis. Me? They requested for you. Uh, oh, well, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mr. Not, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, uh, just uh, because the structure now has changed like this is a new business item. And so ultimately you'll get your staff report. Okay. There'll be council discussion. There'll be public comment and then there'll be the, uh, okay, sorry. the vote. So, so you, you want uh, 
Snap to go first. Yeah, if you don't okay. mind, Mr. L. Snap could then just introduce it because there may be other questions that come about based off of his uh, staff report. Okay, hold tight. <laughs> All right. So good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. My name is John L. Snap. I'm the HR director. So the catastrophic leave policy, just to give some background to it, it's not a new policy. It's a revision to the old one that frankly didn't work. It wasn't utilized, to my knowledge, for at least 10 years. So when an employee had a catastrophic event, a serious health condition, they can't come to work where they're going to lose their insurance. Employees could typically donate sick leave or vacation hours to help pay their premiums. Under the old policy, it just had some terms that were too strict and it, it wouldn't work. And we employees have serious health conditions all the time that we do leave cases for. So we worked with the unions during bargaining. We pulled out the policy that didn't work out of the contracts. We worked, worked together for over the course of about six to nine months, revised it, brought it back. And um, I don't see this policy being something that's gonna be abused because it wasn't used for over 10 years. You do need medical certification from a physician in order for it to be approved. Jason would be involved, the city manager would be involved, I would be involved. Um, and it's it's to help employees when they, they have serious health events or their family. All right, thank you. So council members, questions regarding 4E. Now? Yep. <laughs> You're up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think this is something that city should have in their negotiated packet. Um, I think it can lead to uh, unrest within the, the uh, employees. Um, there's a couple of ways that this can work, and I'm pretty sure that I understand what Mr. Elsnab is, has written, um, that if a person has used up all their personal leave, medical leave, and, and comp leave, they can put a request out for somebody else to use some of their leave for them. Um, and <clears throat> this can happen. And that sometimes it's a good thing, but also can be a negative thing. And, and the negative part of it is, let's say the person that donates, Mr. McCoy donates to me, and he gets into a catastrophic um, event, and he comes back and he says, Mr. Davis, I need to get my leave back. Because once he's given it to me, it's gone. It's no more. It's mine. And I say, no, I, I don't have that leave to give. So there you go. He was kind enough to give, and I'm not going to reciprocate. There's a serious problem then in your office. The other way is... Uh, this use it or lose it thing. And I don't know what our contract has on uh, on your leave of absence, comp time, or sick leave, but those things no longer can be use it or lose it. If you get to a point where you say you can only have 52 hours of this type of leave and you get to 60, well, the, that person will get paid for those. You won't lose it. So that person is uh, better off keeping it for themselves. And I just think it just leads to uh, negative things. Um, but the good part is if somebody is really catastrophic and uh, they need it and somebody contributes and they are allowed to continue with what they are to rehabilitate so they can get back to work. So. That's kind of double-edged as far as I'm concerned, but I, I think it can cause more problem than not. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Any other council members with questions or comments? Oh, oh I, thank you. Council, <laughs> council Baker. Um, is, are the donations to the catastrophic big leave pool, are those... Um, anonymous um, to the person who's receiving them? We would need to most likely, you know, so that this, just to clarify, it hasn't been done for 10 years. So we're, we would be able to design it. However, you know, if the person wanted it to be anonymous, um, we could probably figure out a system for that, but we've never had a sign up list for donating hours, but I'm sure that's something we could, we could uh, create a process for. 
Um, I've seen it both ways. Primarily, I've seen it where there's a sign-up list and the person writes their name and how many hours they want to donate. Um, but we could definitely look at making something anonymous if that made the person more comfortable who needed the catastrophic leave. Um, thank you. I know that uh, when I uh, worked for Siskiyou County, we had a catastrophic leave pool. And I understand Councilman Davis's um, point of view and his concerns, but my experience was that it worked well at the county. Absolutely, and just to add on to that, this isn't just one, people don't, employees don't just donate to one pool. You you apply individually to the person that's requesting it, um, and it is voluntary. Thank you. Councilman McCoy. So can you clarify for me then, just any just school district I've worked in, you donate to a pool. Well, I don't think we've ever had more than one person that had it long term or when I was in my school, except maybe sending to Unify where we had several thousand teachers. We didn't have anybody, we didn't have two people that had cancer or anything, anything catastrophic at the time. What then, if we all decide we want to donate, and it, usually it's the boss that goes out and says, um, Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones is sick. She's going to run out of sick leave. Would you like to donate? And usually they say, I would prefer you donate no more than a day. Because they don't want, a lot of them don't want tons of sick leave on the books. And then you use that. Then if there's a need for more sick leave, then the city manager would go back out and say, oh, it's been 100 days, 100 sick days, which would be like four or four and a half months. We do need yours for more, and then you go in and donate either half a day or a day. Is that correct? The way the policy is written is it doesn't go into that about posting it multiple times. Um, you know, the intent of the pol policy is to help people out, and um, I don't believe there's anything in it that would preclude that from being able to make a second request um, in order to help someone out, but it is just there is limits on how many hours can be donated by each employee and the total hours that can be received by the person with needing the leave. So but, you don't get too many. Yeah. Um, Correct. Um, again, I'm not sure who charges you now. <laughs> I know, again, in education, you don't carry things over. And I know even with my brother and my nephew that works in the university, they don't carry over, they don't carry over uh, vacation but they do carry over sick is that what you were alluding to though okay yeah um if in fact um well i'm gonna hold off because we had we had talked about this before so now you've answered my question <clears throat> thank you mr mayor thank you councilman okay just quick question okay. um is there is this common practice on a lot of other cities and stuff too i guess it's in the private spectrum, I'm like, wow, then we obviously don't do that sort of thing. But um, is this common practice for other cities? Obviously, it is for the county. So I don't know. Is that common practice for other cities? I believe so. If you review cities' MOUs or personnel policies, in my opinion, it is absolutely common. It's They have one at the county. I'm I, um, just going off my memory. I'm, I know the city of Reading has one, and as well as many others. I'd have to fact check on, on Reading, but to my knowledge, that is correct. Just curious, like I said, with the private spectrum, business, you know, we obviously we can't afford to do that. But, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. All right. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I, another question. I understand uh, that the county, as of the first of the year, uh, has changed their catastrophic leave program to the because the law of the state of California changed where you don't use it or lose it you have to get by, bought out on it and that pool that Ms. Baker was speaking of is no longer in existence but that's what I understand now that might be sort of right but I think that's what it is so and and I don't know if John is talking about excuse me Mr. Elsnab is talking about a pool or if it's just voluntarily set aside. I would be glad to give five days of leave. It's it would be closer to the second option. There is no um, 
there is no just random pool people donate and continue to build it up. It's it's per there's, event. there's no pool. Correct. Okay. The other thing that I read in there was that it would be this leave would be donated at the value of the person that's receiving it. So for example, let's say the one of the clerks in the office donates to Mr. Ledbetter. We have a budget issue going on. So it comes in at his wages rather than their wages. Yeah. The one comment I could make to that is a majority, you know, department heads probably make up less than definitely less than 10% of the city. So a majority of your employees are admin techs, operators, maintenance workers. And um, the leave is more, you know, they have a lot better chance of taking advantage of those hours versus us. There's just a smaller percentage of us, but that is correct. There is some, some wa kind of a washing effect, um, but it can also go both ways as well. I can donate my time to a new hire and um, my sick leave, my rate of pay was, is quite a bit different. So it would be less. It would be less in that case. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not for it, just so you know. Okay. Okay. No further questions from the council. I'll go to uh, for public comment. And this is for 4E on the consent agenda. Hi, my name is Louise Gliano. I live in Wairika, and uh, I'd like to speak to that issue. I had a brother um, who was dying of brain cancer, and he worked in California at the California Franchise Tax Board, and he was only like a month away from retirement. And had he, because he'd missed this time, he would not qualify for retirement, and we needed that money to take care of him in a group home and and a facility. And so this was years ago, and I don't know what the policy is at the Franchise Tax Board now, but the way they did it is that people could donate either their vacation time or their sick time. And it went by the hour. I don't think it went by what your pay scale was. And I can tell you that was an awesome program. That really saved us, that helped him. And my brother died at peace because of that. He was worried about getting his bills paid. And I think that's an aw awesome thing to do for people here. And I highly recommend it. And I respectfully, respectfully disagree with you, Mr. Davis. I, if you've never been in that situation, and it was, I could not believe the generosity of the people there at the board. So anyway, I, I would totally support it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll close <clears throat> public comment, and we'll go back to item. Um, for E, what are the wishes of the council? So this is the adoption of resolution 24-27, resolution city council, city of Wairika adopting a catastrophic leave policy to be included in the personal policies and procedure manual. Council McCoy. So moved. I have a motion. Councilman McCoy. I'll second the motion. And a second from Councilman Baker. I'll do roll call. Uh, <clears throat> Councilman Kay. Aye. Councilman Davis. Councilman Baker. Yes. Councilman McCoy. Aye. And Mayor Middleton. Aye. The motion passes four to one with this uh, uh, Councilman Davis voting no on 4E. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no five or six. So now we will go to um, 7A. This is the agenda title. This will be the planning manager. This is discussion possible action regarding the request to waive a temporary use permit fee for a special event known as Warwick at Elks Lodge Father's Day Sock Hawk, Hawk, Hop, I'm sorry, to be held on June 15th in the parking lot at 401 South Main Street, assessor's parcel number 054. Dash one eight six dash zero one zero. Brent Phillippe is the event sponsor on behalf of the Rock Elks Lodge number nineteen eighty. Has submitted a request for a fee waiver for a temporary use permit for a special event known as the Rock Elks Lodge Father's Day Sock Hop, proposed to take place in the parking lot 
of 401 South Main Street. Again, APN number 054.86010. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Uh, thank you for the summary. Um, I would just like to uh, reiterate that this sock hop is essentially a part of the Golden City Days event happening on the same day. So Brant Phillippe of the Elks Lodge, who is organizing this event, has been working closely with Discover Siskiyou. Um, so these are kind of in conjunction. And just to clarify, the request being uh, proposed to you today is a fee waiver for a temporary use permit as required for all events per our municipal code. Um, normally, this event, to, since it's on a pri in a private parking lot, it's in the parking lot across from the wine bar, um, this would normally be ministerially approved, but because the applicant is requesting a waiver for the temporary use permit, it's being presented to the city council for uh, determination. So um, the fiscal impact would be um, $942.55 for the temporary use permit. And the um, there's no recommended action um, from the city staff. But like I said previously, it would make sense to uh, waive the fee since it is essentially a part of Golden City Days and the Father's Day car show happening the following day on Sunday. So the possible action for you to consider tonight is a motion to direct the city manager to waive the temporary use permit fee for the special event known as Wairika Elks Lodge Father's Day Sock Hop. We do have the um, applicant here tonight. Uh, Brant is here to answer any questions you have about the event and I'm available for any questions you have as well. So Brant, do you wanna come up? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, just really want to thank you guys for considering this. Um, the sock cop was my brainchild. Um, I remember a Wairika that used to have sidewalk days and chili cook-offs and car shows and free events for the public. And they were a lot of fun as a kid. You live for the car show, you live for the sidewalk days and the fair. And I want to bring some of that back. I'm moved away, grew up here, moved away, came back, got involved with the Elks Lodge, saw an opportunity, and I'm running with it. Uh, this is my first event, putting something like this together. Uh, I kind of feel like Kevin Bacon right now, asking for a dance in front of the city council on Footloose. Um, <laughs> I don't have my Bible with me. However, um, it's going to be a, a, a fun time, a free event. In fact, um, I have the wine bar co-sponsoring it. I have TNT Auto Body co-sponsoring it and the Elks Lodge are going to co-sponsor it to bring one of the local bands um, here to play live. No alcohol at the event. It's going to be a good time. Um, and I really hope that you consider waiving the fee because it is costing us. We're not making any money off of this. And I just want to, I want to bring some fun back to where we can. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. Just hold tight in case we have some questions from our council members. So I'll go to council um, for questions and to public. Any uh, questions from council members or comments? Call Councilman me. Davis. Sure. Um, Mr. Philby, it's good to see you back. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, are, are you charging yet, uh, entrance fee? No, we are not. And, and uh, public. All okay. ages. So the the band is donating or are you getting that through your sponsor fee? Well, our sponsors, the three sponsors are going to pick up the $600 oh, okay. fee. Are you having the place uh, roped off or is it just going to be open like it is now? It's going to be open like it is now. I'm going to uh, post some trash cans around the outside the perimeter so that trash can be taken care of anything like that. And then we are also going to have some Elks members wandering around, making sure that people aren't blocking off the street and keeping that area clear. Thank you. Just a comment. That's all. Okay. Councilman Cake. And thank you for putting it, putting it on. It's a uh, car show and stuff's been going hand in hand with uh, with a lot of events that we've done in the past, especially with the uh, 
previously gold rush days and stuff. So it's um it's good to see that. It's a big it's a big event and I like to see more events in this time. So thank you. You're welcome. And that was the the idea of bringing it back to the city, not having it out in the fairgrounds away from the public, bringing it back into the city limits where everybody can can have fun. All right. Hey, Councilman McCoy. Councilman thank McCoy. Um, thank you for doing this. It's wonderful. I, 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 I can remember when I first moved here, I don't remember the sock hops, but I do remember the uh, sidewalk sales and things. Um, in your application, you note that you may need possible reserve officers. But we is it twenty dollars an hour for our reserve officers, or what do we pay them? Substantially more than twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> okay, so um, how would you cover that that I, expense to the city? I spoke to um, Chief Gilman about that issue. It wouldn't be the officers would be at the. Um, Sawcop adds patrol officers. He was just going to bring two additional reserve officers on during that night because of all the festivities. And he said mm -hmm. that the, all the years that he's had Sawcops, he's never had an issue at the Sawcop. Mm -hmm. So, so would they be assigned specifically to the Sawcop, or would they be assigned to uh, the 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 old the whole shebang? It's my understanding they would be uh, assigned to the whole city because of everything that's going on that weekend. So there won't be, there isn't necessarily a police officer there. No, sir. And there shouldn't be a need for it. Okay. And then is there a need for K-rail or fencing to keep people from stepping out onto a highway that is in areas is three and four feet down in that special, specifically in that area where they're putting new drains in? Are you um, asking, well, Kev, are you want to ask the uh, well, I, for city I manager? See that, uh, no, I, I just want to make sure the direct the. I the, see that the, the, the chief is coming around, okay. so I'm just get to both Mr. Philippi. I just want to I just want to make sure the, the question is directed to the appropriate you. person. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and City Council members. So I just plan on bringing people out for that whole weekend. It's not just his sock hop. We have a lot going on, so I'm going to have extra officers on duty. They was assigned to the city. Um, I don't think it's going to be an issue for K Rails and stuff. He's going to have his own people out there protecting them. It's not a city event, so I don't want to take responsibility for trying to block everything off and say that I'm in charge. That's up to them. Okay, okay, I appreciate that. Is it something that you and the uh, Mr. Ledbetter, that you and the uh, uh, Chief of Police have chatted about, as far as I mean, I'm assuming it probably is. I'm, uh, generally speaking, our planning manager reaches out to the fire chief and the police chief when it comes to these events, and they're involved in the planning. This one is, it would be different, and we would be talking about K-Rail possibly if we were on uh, public property or city property, and, and this is on private property. And so that's why essentially really these facets of the event have already ministerially be, been approved. And really what's in front of you tonight is just the waiving of the fee of the temporary use permit. Whereas all of these other things internally have met the standard of the city and, and the city as itself through the planning manager has approved the temporary use permit. But now there's the caveat of waiving the fee, which is what we're here to ask the city council if whether or not they would like to waive that fee, if that makes Thank sense. Thank you. I will yield the rest of my questions and, and hold them since it's not appropriate. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Baker. Oh, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, Why are you looking scared at me? When I, uh, <laughs> I grew up in Wairika, so I remember those street dances at sidewalk sales days. And yeah. it was just a lot of fun and you did look forward to it. Um, but um, my question is directed towards city staff in that, can you explain what a use permit, what the necessity of it? I know that it's part of our municipal code um, and what is covered under a use permit? Yeah, there's a, a a litany of things that are covered under a temporary use permit. And just because this is new for the city council and the city of Wairika staff, ultimately, because just recently when we were investigating civil war days, uh, that's when our planning manager really had a thorough look at that particular event with our city attorney. And then our city attorney really dove into the municipal code 
uh, to review kind of what the requirements were. And at that point, we were directed that technically, I think uh, in the past, we were doing things incorrectly, that all special events do actually require a temporary use permit. And so that's why this is a new cost. Normally, when we have people in front of the city council for an event, they're looking to waive the fee to close a road. They're looking to waive a fee to possibly get a stage. And in this instance, this is only now, I think the second or third event that's come to you, that's the requirement of a temporary use permit, but they're extremely broad. They're ministerial and they're, admi they're administered by the planning manager at the planning manager's discretion. And it could be for events like we're talking about, or it could be for, let's say somebody has a piece of property there's no development on that property. And let's say Caltrans wants to use that property uh, for a project or the person that owns that property is gonna do a project. They would come into the city. They would explain the use that they have for their own property. There's no house on the property. So uh, they may be advocating that they want a fence. Well, a fence requires an outbuilding or a house. But in this instance, since they're doing a very specified function, I use this as an example because somebody just got a temporary use permit to do this. Uh, they would be issued a temporary use permit that could last up to, I believe, 24 months. In this instance, uh, all events, which was brought to our attention by Mr. Jared here in the last couple months that um, we did not realize as city staff, but all of our events require a temporary use permit. So now you correlate that temporary use permit back to a fee schedule. And so when the city went and did updates on temporary use permits, really, in my opinion, we were looking at things such as a fence on a property, staff time that it takes to really engage that item is built into that $942.55. It's based off of actual math on how, how, um, how much time is generally needed to do a temporary use permit. When it comes to an event such as the one that we're talking about, uh, that cost may be substantially lower. It may be substantially higher. I mean, I think when we did um, the Civil War days, it was probably more expensive because we had more kind of time and legal time looking into the safety of that event with uh, black powder and all that, uh, that other, those other things that go into play at that event. Um, but in this instance, it is a relatively new thing for the city council to consider. So I think we need to be cognizant of that. And we may want to split our fee schedule in some way. Or really, I know internally and at the finance committee, we've advocated for the possibility of exploring really a special event ordinance that really changes the laws for the city on how we uh, engage all of these costs, all of these items, and getting more stability and more structure for the staff to um, really have something to lean on when we're engaging people and then really streamline this process at the council. And so we're advocating that inevitably we need to work towards that, which would clear up this temporary use permit question. But that is the history of the temporary use permit and its intent that technically on items such as a fence or, or different temporary uses, it's the staff's time on average okay. to get to the final cost, so. Thank you, I appreciate that. Right. Can I just add on to that? It's, yeah. um, that was a great explanation and just more broadly, um, it would address like different types of temporary land uses for um, different activities such as events on public or private property or storage yards um so different types of land uses that can impact um z zoning safety circulation um items like that so is it fair to say then a uh, temporary use permit for a special event really could be looked at um because i know that we do have fees in place for street closures, stage rental. Mm -hmm. um, so this really, I almost see it as like a category of uh, temporary use permits that maybe uh, it would be beneficial for uh, the city to review and come up with some recommendations to bring before the finance committee. Yeah, I think that could be, as an example, when you look at public works 
you have two different types of encroachment permits, a simple and a complex, and they have different costs associated with them. And so if someone's just doing something very simple in the right of way, then that's a simple. If somebody is doing a gigantic project, tearing up part of the road, then that's obviously much more complicated and that would have a higher cost associated with it. And so it's it's relatively discretionary, right? Because on, on certain items, it doesn't take a lot of time to get to an answer. And on other items, it's going to take substantially more time on an event that could cost substantially more than $942, to be honest with you, of staff time. Because we're always talking about the staff time of a public works employee to shut the road down, but we're never talking about the staff time in city hall to bring the paperwork forward and all of that work that's really what that fee is associated but i do think that a dive into the math on some of these simple events that come forward lowering that cost is probably prudent thank you very much for your explanations thank you council baker so basically what you're saying it's all it's never black and white it's not one size fits all when it comes when everybody sees the temporary use permit for just different um, events, properties, what have you. So, all right. Okay. So I will go to public comment at this time. Nobody? All right. I will close the public comment for that item and I will um, come back to council for item. 7A. <clears throat> what are the wishes of the council? Uh, the recommended city council, I'll read it again, but the recommended city council action. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, for you is the motion to direct the city manager to waive the temporary use permit fee for the special event known as Warica Elks Father's Day Sock Hop. So Councilman moved. Cake. Of the motion from Councilman Keg. I'll second that. I second for uh, Councilman Davis. I'll do roll call. Uh, Councilman Cake. Aye. Councilman Davis. Aye. Councilman Baker. Yes. Uh, Councilman McCoy. Councilman Baker. Councilwoman Baker. <laughs> I see your pain. I feel it. We both look at this together and I think it's something I'm going to say yes, but I think it's something that I would agree with you that, you know, we'll go ahead and continue to work towards a solution that cuts out some of the, some, you know, gives more power within the office so they can make decisions. They don't have to rely on us because yeah. it's a very simple decision to make. Thank you. I'm a yes vote. Yes. Okay. Great. And um, so before my vote, I just wanted to say that it is a work in progress with the um, permits and um, finance, finance committee and uh, um, there'll probably be some changes coming down the road of review and different fees when um, a lot of uh, events, people come for us, um, it's going to be changed. But right now, because it's kind of a surprise to a lot of our um citizens right now that the change will be coming um but right now i will um go ahead and vote yes as well so the motion passes five to zero to waive the um fee at this time thank you all right okay so we um uh, are moving down to Okay, item number eight. This is city manager and staff. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, seven e. Seven e. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Seven <laughs> uh, e. This is uh, discussion possible action regarding request to waive the temporary use permit for the special event known as Bicycle Rides Northwest to be held June twenty second, June twenty third. That's not supposed to be, it says June 29th at Jackson Street School. Is that a typo? Oh, they come back. Oh, they come back in. Okay. Just want to make sure. June 20th at Jackson Street School. Jim Moore, Moore is the event sponsor, has submitted a request for a fee waiver for the temporary use permit for the special event known as 
bicycle rides northwest. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. I don't think I actually introduced myself. This is Alia Roca Lezra, planning manager. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> thank you for the summary. Um, this is a request um, for another waiver for a temporary use permit for Bicycle Rides Northwest. They're hosting a bicycle tour throughout Siskiyou County that includes an overnight stop in Wairika, uh, arriving June 22nd, staying the night, uh, departing June 23rd, and then finishing in Wairika June 29th. Um, as you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, the event will be held at Jackson Street School all three of those days. There will be uh, overnight tent camping, catering, and other activities as in, um, as included on their special event site plan, which um, is in your packet. Um, I would like to clarify, this is a similar request as Civil War Days and the SOC Hop. However, it is a private event. It is not open to the public. Um, the event sponsor, um, Jim Moore, who is on the line with us um, on Zoom, is requesting that the city council waive the fee for an issuance of a temporary use permit. Again, the fiscal impact for that is $942.55. There is no recommended action from the um, from city staff. Um, and the question being presented to you tonight um, is would you like to approve the request to waive the temporary use permit for this event? Jim Moore is available for questions, as am I. Jim, would you like to speak? Yes, please. To the council, uh, thank you for listening to this and having taking the time. Um, our organization, Bicycle Rides Northwest, is a nonprofit. We've been doing this for 35 years, running tours throughout the Northwest. We do week-long tours for about 300 riders, 50 or 60 crew, <clears throat> excuse me, moving from town to town. And so in this case, we were um, negotiating with the school district to use Jackson Street Elementary. And that's going to be, our event is going to be completely enclosed within school grounds. So we weren't sure whether our permit was necessary, but we were told that the best way to approach this would be to just ask for a waiver of the fee for a permit um, we're not using any city resources or facilities other than bicycle traffic, which is no different than any other traffic. Um, also, we are giving grants to the school. We are offering fundraising opportunities for school kids and groups. And uh, it's a private event just in that we're just there camping and we have our own caterer and our showers and our toilets, and then we just ride down the road. So we're starting and ending the tour in Wairika. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. And I'll go to um, <clears throat> my council for any questions or comments. <laughs> council Baker. Thank you. So it's my understanding that this is a private event that is not open to the public. And um, are the participants required to pay any kind of fee or, you know, like entry fee? Yes, to cover our costs. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Maker. Okay. Councilman McCoy. Um, Jim, I believe this probably came through last time I saw it at Jackson Street. I was working there a couple summers. Uh, somebody used it and they were starting up at somewhere up in Oregon, coming down the coast and going somewhere down into California. Um, you're starting here. I don't know if that was you or not. Your no, it wasn't. But you're starting here, and then where do you go before you come back? Yeah, just as a, a little background, we were going to do this in 2018, and we were within a week of doing the event, and then fire <laughs> broke out. So between that and COVID, now we're finally trying to come back and do this. So the route is we're starting in, in uh, Wairika and riding to Happy Camp, spending two nights in Happy Camp, and then riding to Etna, two nights in Etna, riding to Weed, two nights in Weed, and then back to Wairika. Okay, and what is the, how many riders do you think you're, how many riders do you have registered currently? 
Uh, our limit is 300. We're about 310 right now, but uh, it's four weeks away. We get cancellations. I think it'll be right around 300. And what is the cost for a single writer? It's $1,675. That's all inclusive of everything. Um, to clarify on the pricing and the fact that we're charging, we just take the cost of the event and divide by the number of riders, and that's the price. We don't, we're a nonprofit. We're not trying to make money. We're actually a C7 nonprofit, which is a social benefit group. So it's basically the, the equivalent of just taking your friends out for a bike ride and having them chip in to pay for it. So are you like a 501C3? C7. Yep. And so you are a non-paid staff member. Is that correct? You don't draw no. any salary or any draw or any money uh, from this um, private, from this 501c3? No, I am I am the executive director of the organization. The board hires me to manage the event. It's a year-round job, actually. It's a lot of details. We do two of these tours each summer. And so uh, it takes me all year to plan them, permits and vendors and et cetera. Okay. And are you the only employee of this uh, 501c3? The crew members we bring along on the tour are temporary employees. We pay it. We don't use volunteers. We actually pay our crew to be on the tour. So they're temporary employees. And how many crew members do you bring? And what's We're going to have about 45. And then the vendors, the shower company, the catering company, they bring their own crew as well. And then your um, your hourly rate to not the vendors or the shower crew, but your hourly rate for... Um, the 45 employees you carry with you, what is that? Well, we pay them a weekly stipend, actually. It's a salary as opposed to an hourly rate. It starts at around $1,000 and goes up to $2,000 for the week. For the week. Yeah. And this last, this particular ride is for how 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 many weeks? One? Yeah, they're all one-week rides starting on a Saturday and ending on a Saturday. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, you bet. Just to clarify your answers, um, so I did not hear. I'm sorry. Did you say it's uh, uh, 1675 per writer? Yes. And then you have 210 currently registered? 310. Oh, 300. Okay. Okay. No questions? No questions? Okay. We can talk out to... Uh... Public comment. <laughs> Sorry. Don Marie Autry. Um, this is in my wheelhouse. Um, I cooked for bike riders for 10 years, and I know exactly how it is. And the fee that they collect and the sponsors that they have pay for all of the events. It's all usually covered. Um, and as I say, I did it for 10 years. I cooked, I followed them from Washington State to Washington, DC. I know exactly how it works. And and they should be paying for it. I know that they say that they're a nonprofit, but someone's paying their catering company. Someone's paying for all of their their um, employees, so they should be paying the weaver, the waiver. They shouldn't. We should not waiver it. We should. They should be paying the fees. Thank you. May I address that? Uh, I'll come back to you after uh, I close public comment. Uh, sure. Any other public comment or questions? Uh. Nancy Ogren, Siskiyou County Supervisor for District 4 here in Wairika. Um, One clarifying comment. Did you say you were a nonprofit C7? 501C7? Yes. Correct. Not C3. C3. No, C7. C3. I heard C7. Okay, that was just for clarification. Um, I'm curious with all of these 300-ish people, um, do they have a chance to visit the communities that they ride through or are they just rolling through? And I'll have you answer the questions when she gets done answering those questions, then we'll go back to all the and, public questions. And if they're allowed to spend money in our communities. 
All right. Any other public comment? Okay, I'll close public comment. So you had um, two questions from um, Supervisor Ogren, and then you had uh, uh, you wanted to clarify from our citizen, um, Ms. Autry. Mr. Bork. Yeah, so uh, starting with the first speaker, uh, we actually don't have sponsors. Um, we don't have any other source of income. As I explained, uh, our organization and our tours are paid for strictly straight through the riders. We take the total cost, including the caterers and the shower trucks and the vans and all the things that we have. And I do a budget that has the total cost of that and we divide by the number of riders. So there's no profit, there's no money being put away. I mean, it's a true nonprofit, especially the C7 status. To reiterate that a 501c7 is a social benefit group. It basically exists only for the benefit of its members so that they can do what they do. In this case, ride bikes. So there's no sort of capitalism uh, profit motive here. We just take our, our folks to different towns and different places to ride, and uh, they chip in and pay for it. As far as uh, engaging with the communities, that's a huge emphasis for us. So we have, uh, we'll be talking to people about what's going on in Wairika um, before the tour. If they want to come in a day early or the day they come in on Saturday, they don't have to be in our camp until six. And then we have what's called layover days, which is when we're staying two nights in, in Happy Camp and two nights at Etna and two nights in Weed. And we have uh, local activities, museums, we're going to have a barbecue fundraiser in Etna and uh, the restaurants there. We're not going to serve lunch one day so that people will go in and spend money on the restaurants. We're going to have local speakers speaking about geology, um, dam removal, other, other topics. And we pay them stipends to come and speak to our, our riders. But we engage with the towns as much as we can. That's why we have the community grant program as well. In each community for each day that we're there, we give a thousand dollar grant to whatever project they identify as needing help. So we're going to help the daycare center and happy camp, and we're going to help the police athletic league program in Etna and the school in Wairika. We're giving, we're paying the school. Uh, let me think about this. It's $1,200, 600 for the camping fee and $600 for parking plus a thousand dollar grant that will go to whatever they need. Um, to supplement, I guess. All right. Thank you. Okay. So. Towards our, uh, towards YPD's dog, maybe. <laughs> no, it's yours. All right, so. Um... Weird questions from the audience and the staff. <clears throat> so the recommended city council action is um, is asking for the fee to be waived for the temporary use permit fee for the special event known as Bicycle Rides Northwest. Private event. the wishes of the council not to ever jump up at once. Alex, I raised some thought here. So move. I have a motion from Councilman Keg. Motion dies. Uh, motion, motion looks like dies. Uh, for non support, just had to be one motion for approval, and no other council member is supporting that motion. So, okay. No, 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 I know that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said the motion. It's, um, it stalls.
Okay, so the motion dies for lack of second. So I, um, I'm assuming now if the event is to go forward that the fee does have to be paid, correct? Mr. Ledbetter? I'm sorry, I was in oh, the middle I, of talking. I would say uh, due to the motion failing if the event was to go forward that uh, Mr. Moore in the event known as Bicycle Rides Northwest would have to pay the um, fee, correct? Yeah, ministerially it's approved by the staff based off of... Um, the work that they did reviewing the application and really at this point it was just to discuss the waiver and it sounds like the motion kind of died and so ultimately we would be then as staff directing mr moore to pay that fee uh for the event to happen um ultimately there's no camping in the city you know uh of Wairika, so there's really we don't allow the camping over at the the school so ultimately there would be a violation so you'd be paying the fee to make sure that that was approved and appropriate okay thank you so you have a direction to be in talks with mr Bohr to um uh, complete his application should he move forward to pay the um event fee correct yeah we'll reach right. out to mr Moore tomorrow All right thank you okay now out on to item number eight this is city manager thank you mr Moore. have a good evening Item number eight, city manager and staff reports. City manager and staff may make brief announcements or reports at this time. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Wairika City Council, Jason Ledbetter, city manager for the city of Wairika. So uh, just uh, about eight things to go over with you tonight. On 5-9, uh, I attended the Siskiyou Conservative Republicans meeting in Montague as a guest speaker for the state of Siskiyou panel. Uh, we have posted the code enforcement position, uh, online, uh, we're currently recruiting for that. And, uh, currently the clerk, myself and the fire chief are meeting weekly to go over kind of the weed abatement complaints that are coming in. That's the major thing that we're tackling with code enforcement, but then the city clerk and myself are at this point until we get someone hired are working on the major code enforcement complaints. Uh, I met with uh, an individual by the name of Mia Lewis, a grad student at UCLA. Uh, did that with the community development director. Uh, she is doing a special project with uh, Bruce Deutsch of the Dunsmuir City Council uh, on behalf of uh, really the local transportation commission. Mia is writing a plan that attempts to answer the following question. How can rural municipalities like Siskiyou County utilize data-driven insights, best practices from successful case studies, and innovative transportation models to improve mobility, accessibility, and overall transit service quality for both residents and tourists? Uh, that's something that Mr. Deutsch is working on with Mia, so hopefully we'll see that at the Local Transportation Commission soon. Uh, South Oregon Street Rehab Project has started. They started to uh, basically tear down the ends of the sidewalks and replace those with the ADA sidewalk ramps. So those are getting installed. And just as a reminder to everybody, that project is from 4-H all the way down just past Fenwalls. Uh, that's what is going to be replaced or rehabbed as part of the road. Uh, the wastewater collection project is still active and all over the city, if you have not noticed. Uh, the Oak Street Alley is currently getting work done. Knapp Street had work done and obviously the Burgess Street neighborhoods. Uh, the first farmer's market on Minor Street uh, this season kicks off Friday, May 31st at 3 p.m. Fire Chief Lemos and I released our first of two educational videos about Wairika Fire Department to Facebook yesterday. Uh, this educational video focused on volunteer response versus increase in medical calls. The final video we will shoot at the Siskiyou Media Council, uh, we will discuss the needs of Lay Station and kind of uh, the current status of that station. Uh, and then finally, I am meeting with Rotary on Thursday. Uh, if you're not aware, Rotary, uh, just to the newer council members, I, but I think you probably are aware, Rotary every year does a grant and they work with the city to do some project and over many years they helped to replace all of the wooden picnic tables over at Greenhorn with cement, uh, which is fabulous because obviously when we water the lawn or when you get rain there was just a lot of issues with those wooden um, tables. 
Tammy, who is doing all that beautiful work on Miner Street, came to us recently and stated that she really felt like some more beautification on the, in the downtown corridor was needed and something that was kind of a low-hanging fruit item were the garbage cans. And so if you go out to Deer Creek and the bathroom that we have out there and you look at the garbage cans, they're these really beautiful black metal. And so we are working with Rotary. They have already, from an email that I got today, kind of allocated $4,000 to work on this garbage can beautification project in the downtown area of Wairika. So we're very excited. And they have some other ideas. So I'll be bringing those ideas back to uh, City Council. But we'll continue that trend of working with Wairika Rotary as they invest in um, just these really nice extra additions to the city. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ledbetter. All right. Let's go to council members. Who wants to go first? Want to go first? Council Member McCoy. <laughs> um, I had a lovely time the last couple of weekends with um, Councilman K. Can I say that, Councilman K? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I had walked the homeless camps alone, some of them, but I hadn't been out there a lot. We had a good time walking the homeless camps. Um, we got to see lots of things that I don't need to, we don't need to share now, but we'll share it later with the rest of council and and Mr. Ledbetter and public works and that sort of thing. Um, so um, I did, I, I you know, I, with that being said, um, I, I'm going to take issue with a few things that were said tonight. I know I shouldn't do this, but we were said that the council is responsible for the homeless and we are not actually responsible for the homeless. Actually, probably where the homeless started was when Ronald Reagan was governor of this state and I'm not picking on him or anybody else. They continued later. Um, we can blame the welfare state on whoever we want, but we all take advantage of the welfare state now, probably anybody that's over 62. And the welfare state started under Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1935. And then the money became the Old Age and Infirmed Act and started flowing out in 1940. Uh, Dwight D. I, it was a 10-year program. It was supposed to end. Dwight D. Eisenhower and his party knew that if they voted for it, he would lose the presidency in his in his reelection and the republicans at that point would lose the majority um they, that's straight from his words I, I was reading his autobiography uh, i mean his biography so so yeah i mean uh whether we agree with it or not i know my grandfather said i don't need social security i don't need to take government money we got a lot of people to do so you know let's if we're gonna we gotta get our facts straight if we're gonna talk about where things start uh you know i mean we need to be honest with ourselves um, Dwayne and I had great talk with the homeless. Um, we talked with everybody this week out on the, on the Greenway. Um, the one thing we talked a lot about were seeing if they had gotten their shots at the last clinic. And then we talked about getting shots for the dogs. There are some people that are averse to getting shots for the dogs. We did explain to them, however, that they can get the shots and do, they can do volunteer work for the city, that the city is going to do that. And and so hopefully we'll get a, we'll get a few people that will come in out of that. We also reminded them that if your dog is not spayed or neutered, it's going to cost you more, a lot more. So um, um, anyway, but it was it was it was good to be out there and talking. There was actually I won't say who somebody out there cleaning up the creek right where the the bridge has broken away and everything, and he doing a good job. We chatted for him to him for a while. Um, the only thing that I noticed, and I think uh, YPD. And Sergeant Buker are doing a great job. But I noticed as I walked the hill two weeks ago is that we have way too many campgrounds that are close to the top. And we have way too many that are close to the fire breaks, in my opinion. Again, I'm not, you know, I don't report every week to you and let you know how things are going because I, I don't have the time to get out there every week. So, but, you know, it's just something to think about. Um, and... Um, uh, it was nice to see that Officer uh, Buker was uh, working with the the little uh, hidey holes that people are in, because that uh, is critical infrastructure out there near our uh, near our Greenhorn Lake. So I counted 18 camps on the hill two weeks ago, much less than I thought I would count, and um, and I think we counted probably more than we thought we were going to get on the Greenway, but it wasn't as many as it could have been. 
Um, I, I, I uh, am so happy that he brought the greenway, the bridge that goes under the greenway on the freeway there, because I can remember six years ago coming on this council when it was graffitied exactly like it is now and saying to the city manager at that time, hey, let's see if we can work with Caltrans or somebody to paint it. So, um, you know, again, as uh, Dwayne and I, uh, sorry, Mr. Keg, as we chatted with each of the people that we could and talked about their animals and their health and whether and, and what's going on with the um, base camp and those sorts of things, for the most part, we got very positive comments, not about what we're doing, but comments that I think makes me feel that we have we have a good number of people that will say, I want to take advantage of that. And thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Coy. Councilman Davis. In the commission report. that I am on doesn't <laughs> meet until next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, really don't have anything to report about that, but I, Chief Lemus, I believe we got a burner. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I believe we all got a picture of that in the email. Uh, that is really a wonderful cool. uh, piece of equipment to be able to work here in town and not be quite as smoky as it does in the fall. So, uh, oh, Chief, we want you to put that baby to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Council Baker. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I have a number of things. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, the Collier Interpretive Information Center, C2C, um, is meeting um, on the 28th of this month in Wairika. Um, and I sit on that. And there's some exciting possibilities for some funding of uh, some of some programs that would benefit tourism um, in Siskiyou County. Um, so we'll be hearing more about that. Um, I really would love to go on a tour of Crossroads and of the Greenway and Fall Creek when we're able to get up to that area. Um, I would also reiterate uh, my desire to have a policy on uh, fees for events um, and uh, I know that we've been talking about that, but I'm just going to reiterate it for the record. Um, and then also uh, with budget coming up, um, and I don't know the appropriate way to bring this up, but I, so I'll just uh, throw it out there for everybody. I really would like to have some type of discussion about making funds available for SNP, for Angels, Rescue Ranch, um, those organizations that work with with animals here, feral animals and animals who needs home homes. And um, finally, um, I, uh, Mr. Ledbetter would request um, a report from the affected department heads on the plan to enforce our fireworks ordinance since the 4th of July is coming up. Thank you. Thank you, noted. Thank you. <laughs> all right councilman k awesome thank you and, and thank you mr mccoy for the uh time we got to to share together and doing a little walkabout on two different occasions um it is enlightening and and actually i i, I will say that i thought there would be a, a little bit more on the hill um but there was definitely honestly there was more than i and definitely anticipated on the greenway between Oberlin, Oberlin and the uh, old Forest Service or Forest Service building there. There's actually a lot of homeless activity there. Um, a lot of positive uh, feedback from actually um, the homeless individuals on, on Buker, Sergeant Buker, that um, it was very positive. One individual said that um, she got cited, but was very, um, but was very happy with the way that um, Mr. Sergeant Buker handled the situation and did a very good job and that he did his due diligence and did the right thing. So um, it was good. It was actually a very positive um, uh, encounter that he, that she had. So thank you. And, and yes, 
And uh, Sergeant Buker is doing a great job. Boots on the ground, getting up there on the hill, on the greenway. He's doing an awesome job. I mean, I think he's top notch. He communicates properly with the individuals. Um, he's just doing a really good job all the way around on doing that job and making sure that the individuals are getting the proper attention, that we're not getting out of control on these campsites, um, the proper regulation, and but yet building some type of, uh, um, of what do you want to say, um, communications with them on trying to get connections with services and stuff too. So he's he's doing a great job. Um, speaking of communications, um, there's a newsletter out too that the COC does have. It's called The Bridge. And I'd like to, I'm not going to read this, but I would like to send it out to the rest of the council. And I'll next time on the next meeting, I'll read what the what this is all about. But it's that just has some stuff that some homeless individuals write about, what services are going on, what things are happening on um, like the showers and whatnot. But it also actually has a little thing in here talking about um, one of the situations that the homeless individuals are going through. So it was, it was kind of enlight enlightening to hear what they're, you know, going through too. We can stand back and, and, you know, judge what we can, but, you know, to you walk a mile. And that's what this was. One of the things was about walking a mile in their, in their shoes. You don't understand. I, I have a lot better understanding just from previous, um, from what I used to think in conjunction to what I think now from, Mike, the individual that, you know, has been working out my shop and he's, he's enlightened me on a lot of different things on what the homeless individuals go through and, and on, on a daily basis. But anyways, the other thing we also, I just had a meeting today um, on our point in time count. We set a date, which is on um, Tuesday, the 21st of January. That's when this, the night of the, the point in time count starts. So that was set. There actually is um, going to be a new coordinator, um, a paid position for a PIT coordinator now, instead of a volunteer like I got to do this last year. So that's a blessing for me, I'll tell you, because someone else can actually um, handle it and have the time to do it and not have to work on it on the spare time like I had to and and what Madeline had to is she's putting a lot of time. So um, we'll start next time on the actual surveys. Um, and let's see what else I want to go over. I mean, there's some other things on homelessness. I, I agree that um, there's things that need to be in some definite improvement on how we handle homelessness. So we can go um, citizens, what citizens say and, and, what we can legally do and we need to find uh, a proper structure. And that's what we're going to be doing as a council, finding that proper structure of what's legal and helping these individuals get services that they definitely need. And what Mr. McCoy says, uh, and talking about the Reagan administration, um, I actually have a little story behind that. A couple of years ago, or not less, probably less than that, I had an individual come into my shop and looking for countertops and to have a discussion on that. And this individual, uh, we got to talking about homelessness and what was going on in this city and what we were doing. And and this uh, this gal was really impressed of what we're trying to trying to get accomplished in this city. And she started talking about, oh, yeah, she knew about the whole problem that started up during the Reagan administration. And I go, it's funny that you know that because I go, I've been. I've researched that and tracked a lot of it back to that and stuff. And she goes, well, it's not that I um, heard about it. She goes, I lived it. She goes, I was a social work and worker down in the Bay area when that all took place, when they shut down all the, the uh, mental institutions and stuff. She goes, I lived that. She goes, there was thousands of people that were displaced back in the day that had no place to go. There was no game plan on where these individuals could go. And that was definitely a huge creation of where we're at today. So um, it was interesting that I'd actually had somebody in my shop that knew firsthand about that in those circumstances and stuff. Um, other thing is us as a council, I just want some clarification on communication. I, I wasn't trying to isolate anybody 
on the communication that was talking about earlier. I just think as us as as a council, as city staff and everything, we do need to figure out what this whole thing on events, how it's structured, how things are going, because we start okay in this, we okay that, and there's we really don't have any um so some real good structure on this. What that means, I don't know. Um, I think that's just going to be a lot of discussion with us as a council, and but we need to have that that discussion. There needs to be that um, communication with all of us, with staff, with us as council, and getting that fixed because there's um, we shouldn't have any these issues that we're having, and we just need to figure out that what that means. Maybe I'm too old school, and we <laughs> we did a lot of back in back in the day where a lot of this was okay and that was okay, and and probably shouldn't have been. Maybe you know probably back in the day, but we need to figure out that structure. Um, I'm obviously the type of person that likes lots of functions because I was on the chamber for so many years, and I like to see lots of functions going on. So you'll always hear me kind of going leaning towards the function just because that's who I am. Sorry if it offends anybody. I wasn't meant to offend anybody. I'm just wanting to see um, lots of events. So sorry about that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'll let everybody go on their way. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councilman Kay. All right. So um kind to piggyback on a couple of the council members and their comments and um what not is I did um I know Mrs. Frazier real well at SNP and um I ran into her and she did say they administrated over 30 um parvo shots and I think she said probably 10 rabies shots to the unhoused populations and people might say, Oh, I have to pay for mine. Yeah, I had to pay for mine, but you know what? Um I'm thankful they gave the parvo shots. People don't realize how deadly parvo is. And I would think the citizens that question it, like why they get that parvo shot should be thankful because it's a simple step at the park. It's on their shoes. If they go home to a puppy, Nancy shake her head because she raises dogs, she knows they can, it can be on their shoes and their puppy gets it. So um, I want to applaud them for giving the um, shots and the uh, unhoused citizens um, allowing their dogs to get the shots and want to care for their um, for babies. So, um, but yeah, that's out of cost of, you know, their pocket probably around just calculation $1,300 is what they spent out of their pocket that day to um, provide those shots, $30 per shot, she said. Um, and so thankful for that organization and all they do. And sometimes they go in, uh, SNP goes unrecognized and a lot of the other shelters get a little more, um, you know, I'm not sure they all do great. I don't, so I don't want that to anybody take my words wrong, but sometimes they go unnoticed a little bit and some of the other organizations get some good funding. So, um, I want to thank her for going up and participating in that. Um, yes, I've been getting, um, that campus drive is, looks a lot better. Um, so thankful, for, I'm, uh, thankful for that and thank, um, everybody for the staff and, um, uh, Sergeant Buker, um, Chief Gilman, everybody involved, Jason, Sir so better everybody involved in getting that cleaned up. I know it was a long wait just because of the weather it was against us because that ground was so wet and I know people were frustrated, but I explained to them all the time that we could not get up there. And it did get out of hand. I hope we have control of the situation and it doesn't get like that again. So um, thank you, everybody, for that. Um, you know, as far as it is, it's a learning experience um, with the events, I think the events, um, as far as the application goes, I don't think any of that has changed as far as the rules and the questions and what you're going to have at the events. What has changed is I think something, you know, the B correct me wrong it has always been there but it has it and our attorney just discovered that and it comes with sometimes change is upsetting to people whether it be good or for the bad this is a bad of course because it is a fee that comes of um to the event and it sounds like it's always been in place but was never enforced and that's when 
you know, we have a new legal team that discovered this. And I think it's probably getting the message out that they're, you know, that's why I kind of said, yeah, we might be lenient this year, but maybe next year there's going to be a new policy where that's going to be the standard, but our citizens just have to know that. It's kind of a surprise to them now, but I think, you know, moving forward when it's in place, they know exactly what it is. Just like someone coming in, you know, having a building permit, they know exactly what that's going to cost them. And I think that's what our staff is working towards. And so there's been some growing sp- pains and learning experience, but um, we just learn and move forward. And, uh, you know, I want events as well. I want to go smoothly. And I think our staff works towards that, but it's working together with everybody, including us, to make that happen. So um, I did get to go down um, real quick in person and see the burner, and it was amazing. Um, It wasn't what I was expecting, you know, anything. I didn't, you know, I know it was on its way, and I heard it was there, and the trainer happened to be there. So I got to see firsthand of a lot of the branches dumps they removed from greenhorn and instead of just being in a big pile they're able to transport it down to the city yard and get rid of it right away so that's um it was great and so that was um very cool to see so a lot of great things happening um i don't want people to get discouraged that are bringing our events we want to work with them um there's great energy in the city of rairica um for events coming downtown um, I think this council has worked on making it happen. There's good things coming. We have citizens wanting to bring things back or, you know, bring things forward that's been denied or, you know, that it happened 10 years ago or this oh, it was forever ago. It can't be done again, but they're wanting to come forward. So I'm happy to see that. So it's just about keeping, you know, the positive energy going, I think, from here to our citizens and to the staff, but I think our staff works very hard and I think, you know, they're learning as well. And I know they have not been treated very well from several citizens um, when they're told something that they don't like. And so that's, you know, bothersome to me that a citizen can treat our staff poorly when they're doing their job and it's just a policy. So, um, yeah, so I will say that, that it just takes, you know, we're all trying out here to for a better Wairika, and I want to continue that. I want all of us to continue that. And um, with that, I will adjourn the meeting and wish everybody a good evening, and thank you for coming. Meeting adjourned.